Hey friends, it's Jess Francisco. On behalf of Ranger today, I'm really excited to be here with you. Let me know if you can hear me, make sure everything sounds okay. Um, I am so super excited to be here with you today. It has been a while. Um, be sure to let us know where you are tuning in from. Drop a comment in the chat. If you're watching in the replay, go ahead and skip ahead a few minutes. Um, once we get settled and we say hi to everybody, then we'll jump right in. Um, but that's the beauty of the live videos. We get to chat with each other at the beginning. <laughs> you can hear me. Okay, yay, awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm excited to share some new products from Ranger with you today. Um, I know you're gonna love them. I'm really excited. You're in Illinois. Hello, hello. Um, I'm looking, if I'm looking over to the side, I'm just looking at the chat um, so I can see everybody. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Joanna. Um, really excited to have you all here today. I'm thrilled to be here. If you guys don't know me, um, my name is Jess Francisco and I am a content creator in the card making world. Um, so I have been really into paper crafting and all things art and making things since I was little. Um, and I started making cards in 2015. So coming up on 10 years almost already. Wow, that's wild. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited to be able to be here with Ranger and share some new products with you today. Um, oh, Texas in the UK. Oh my goodness. I'm happy to have you guys here. <laughs> um, so we are going to jump in here in just a moment and take a look at some brand new products. Hello in Sweden. <laughs> um, we're going to look at a couple different things. We have a, a few new things to look at. Um, so I'm going to show you what the new products are and give you kind of some inspiration on how you can use them in your crafty endeavors. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Hello in New Mexico. <laughs> um, so excited to have you all here. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on with Ranger. So this is really cool. Uh, it's good to see you all. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at some of the new products. Um, I think what we'll do is go ahead and look at them and then I'll show you kind of what they can be used for. Um, oh, thanks, Patty. <laughs> um, and then, um, so what I'll do is I'll switch to the top down camera so that you guys can see uh, my desktop. Um, and then if we need to, we can kind of switch back and forth. But for the most part, we will be um, looking down at the desktop and and um, we'll take a look at those new products. So I'll go ahead and switch over there. Hang tight just a second. All right, so sorry for the black screen for a second there. <laughs> All right, so now we have uh, the desktop view and we're ready to go ahead and get started. The very first product that we're gonna take a look at is a tool um, rather than like a, a new addition to your mediums. Um, and what we are looking at is a new brushes. Um, so these guys come in a pack of six. They are angled brushes. I've got my package right here so you can see what that packaging is going to look like. And um, so these are soft angled brushes and they have a wooden handle. Um, like I said, they come in that pack of six. Mine are well loved already. They're a little dirty. <laughs> I have been getting crafty with these guys. They are great for painting images if you want to use your um, inks. So you can put them with the archival inks. Let me go ahead and get that closer so you can see. Hopefully that will focus for us a little bit there. Uh, let's see if I can bring it closer and get it to focus for you. It's a little bit out of focus there, huh? Um, but hopefully you can see that angled tip there. So it's got a nice sharp angle um, and we are able to go ahead and get into some nice small areas with these brushes. Um, I have been using them to do some painting with my stamped images. So I have a stamped image here um, and you can actually take 
um, some of your inks and go ahead and paint directly into those small areas. And especially with that angled tip there, um, you're able to get into some of those little cracks and crevices and really be detailed with those brushes. So I think that that's really cool. You can also use these with paints, gessos, pastes, um, anything like that. They're gonna give you that really nice um, detailed ability there. Um, you can do larger areas with them too. Um, let me grab, um, I'm gonna grab an ink pad really quick. Hold on one sec. All right, so, oh goodness, I'm dumping things out. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we have, this is a, an existing ink pad color that we have, Vivid Chartreuse. Um, so this is a Ranger Archival ink. Um, and you can just paint directly onto that ink pad like, like that. Um, and then we can go directly on to our cardstock. Um, you can also blend mediums with these. So you can see I'm able to paint that directly here. Um, so let's say you wanted to use... Um, maybe something a little darker or a little lighter. Um, you can adjust that color um, by combining them with other things. So um, we have just a, an acrylic block here. I'm gonna put just a little drop of rubbing alcohol um, on my, oh, I said a little drop, it was a little more than that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put that little bit of rubbing alcohol here with that ink still on my uh, my brush here and then if I dip that in here hopefully you can see let me if I put it over top of the cardstock here there's a little bit of that green here in the alcohol um, and then that will dilute it a bit and make it a little bit more easy to spread um, so here we go you can see that lighter color. Now this paper, this cardstock is not really made for water mediums or uh, liquid. <laughs> so it's not gonna be the best example here, but uh, we've got the, the lighter and more even brushed on color here. Whereas this from directly from the ink pad is a little bit more pigmented, um, but can be a little bit more splotchy. So you kind of have um, some different options here. If you want a little bit more of smooth coverage, you can definitely add a medium like that rubbing alcohol, um, uh, or you can use it just straight from the ink pad. Um, so that's an existing color. Let me grab a paper towel and clean that guy off. Um, just an idea for how you can use those. Um, there's lots of different ways, obviously, like paints, pastes, and the traditional mixed media methods that you might be using with your projects. Um, but you can also get creative and use those with alcohol and um, to paint your stamped images as well. Um, so when we're looking here, if we're doing a little bit of painting and we wanna do some of these uh, stems, um, we can just come right in here and apply that color. And you can see I'm able to go right, well, hopefully you can see, I picked maybe the, a lighter color than I should have for this. <laughs> I should have probably used a darker green. Um, I'll hold it up here in just a second so you can see that color. I went a little outside the lines. Don't judge me too harshly. <laughs> um, so you can see that green there in the leaf. Um, and then you can really get your, um, your colors uh, in here and um, spread those with the paintbrush. Like I said, with that fine angled tip, you can really get in there and paint those images. We've got another, and this is really cool to be able to add those fine details um, because you can go in with other colors as well. So let's say you wanted to add some shading, you could grab a darker color green um, and then add that in those areas where there would be some shading. Um, and then you're able to go right in and add that. Um, so let's say, you know, you want to color this whole stamped image in and you really want it to look um, like to have depth or dimension um, that will be able to give you that effect. So there we see we've got our stems nice and painted in at the bottom colored without needing a marker or anything like that. You can use these brushes. They're great. I love that they are um, the smaller size. A lot of the brushes tend to be quite large and for stamped images, um, if you're like me and you do a lot with stamping, um, that can be difficult because those brushes really aren't very uh, user friendly as far as using them with stamped images. Um, but yeah, so they come in a pack of six. If you are interested in any of the products that we're looking at today, um, Patty will be able to link those for us. And then in the description down below, you can actually click the link 
um, in the description and it will take you to the newest products. And so these will be available um, either now or here shortly. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are our new brushes. Like I said, they come in that pack of six. Um, if you all have any questions, feel free to ask and chat with me and let me know. But that's the first look. We might pull these back out here in just a little bit um, and do some fun techniques when we get some of our other products going. Um, so the next thing that we're going to look at is a new line of colors with our archival inks. So we have six new colors that I am really excited to share with you. Um, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I have had so much fun creating with all of these. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show them to you one by one and let you see them. I'm gonna line them all up together. I'm giving you a sneak peek over here um, <laughs> in a few more minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Patty. Yes, the smaller brushes, right? They're good size. I like them for paper crafting especially. All right, so our first color is one of my favorites and I will be 100% honest. When I first saw this, I didn't love it. I saw the outside and I was like, mm, maybe not my favorite type of color. And then I started using it and I was like, oh my gosh, this color is so great. So this one is called Cayenne and it's a really kind of orangey red. Um, so it's got that nice hot pepper sort of vibe to it uh, for its namesake, obviously, the Cayenne. I absolutely love it. So I'll take that off and let you see the ink pad. You can see mine is well loved already. <laughs> um, this is a gorgeous addition to the line. And then we have a really fun red called Wine Cellar. Um, these ones I didn't think were going to pair very well together when I started to make my colors uh, and my swatches and everything and I was making some samples with the cards and they actually worked really well together. I thought, oh, I'll have to use these separately, um, but I was actually able to use them together and I will show you that here in just a little bit. I have a sample um, that I can show you. Um, then we also have um, one of my favorites, this little guy is Beach Cruiser. Absolutely love me a sea green or teal turquoise sort of vibe. And this is it. On the camera, it looks a little bit more dusty blue than it does in person. It has a little bit more of a green tint to it um, in person. Um, but it is a an absolutely beautiful color. Really, really love that. And then we also have Mountain Lake. These pair so beautifully together. I absolutely love those. <laughs> um, yes, the detail brushes, absolutely. I love how small you can get into those cracks and crevices with those. <laughs> um, we also have the Aubergine, which is a beautiful purple. Do you guys say Aubergine or Aubergine? Aubergine? I always hear people say these differently. I'm interested to know how you say it. <laughs> I think it has something to do with uh, the part of the country that you live in too, right? <laughs> um, and then our last color is graphite. So a nice darker gray color. Um, this one was so nice to add some depth and dimension to some of these colors. And I'll show you an example of how I did that um, here in just a second. Um, so these are our six new colors of archival inks. So pretty. I absolutely love these colors. They are gorgeous. Um, and of course, with the new colors, they also, of course, have their re-inkers. Um, so I will pull those out as well. Super pretty, pretty colors, right? I agree. They are gorgeous. Aubergine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm right either. I don't know, Patty. I think Aubergine is common. Yeah. I'm always interested to hear how people say things. <laughs> um, so this one is our graphite. This guy is our beach cruiser. This one is our Aubergine. I'm going with it. Let's say Aubergine. <laughs> um, Mountain Lake. Cayenne and then our wine cellar. So we have the archival ink and then their re-inker that goes with each of those. So these are, of course, to re-ink your pad. However, you can also use these for techniques as well. So you're not limited to just re-inking. With these, you can use them to make all sorts of different things, which is really cool. Um, so you kind of get a lot when you get these, um, these re-inkers. I think that's really neat. Um, so for example, 
with our reinkers. I'm gonna pull out a piece of, this is Yupo cardstock, I'll put it, it's alcohol ink um, Yupo, it's a five by seven. So um, this is uh, available um, through Ranger. And we'll go ahead and put a little bit here. I'm gonna grab my brush again. Um, let's grab one that's maybe not green or red. <laughs> um, although maybe we'll use it for that, I don't know. So just to kind of see what you can do, let's see, we'll put a little drop here. This is the wine cellar. Um, and then, so you can spread this directly um, out like this. Hello, Christine. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so you can spread that reinker directly out on the Yupo like this, so you can paint with it, which is really cool. Um, and then if you add that alcohol, again, this is 91% just from the store. <laughs> Nothing fancy, not a special product or anything. And I'm just going to put just a little drop on here. Hopefully this time I mean a little drop when I say a little drop. <laughs> um, and I'm going to use a little bit of that here. And you can see it dilutes that color a little bit. Um, so you get a lighter version. Now that reinker is very pigmented because that is the ink that's going in here, right? So it's extremely pigmented. Um, when you add the alcohol, it lightens up that color, right? So you can get some fun variations in the color by doing it that way. Um, you can also use things like, isn't it beautiful? That's such a pretty color. <laughs> Um, you can also use things like your ink blending tools to apply the color. You can even use something like a paper towel to add texture. Um, so you can see that really interesting bit there. It almost gives it sort of a watercolor vibe. Um, you can turn that over and we can do the same thing here with this one. And then once you have it on your paper towel too, you can even blend it just with a paper towel. You don't have to have anything fancy and we can get an entire colored background with just one drop of that reinker um, and applying that onto our cardstock here. Now remember this is the Yupo cardstock so it's really made to go um, with that alcohol ink um, and so it works really well with the uh, with the reinkers and the alcohol there. So see how far that goes? We really only had just that one drop and it's just a paper towel. So let's say you only had that one drop, right? Like you were at the end of your reinker and that's all you had was one little drop. Well, since we're using alcohol and it's reactivated by that alcohol versus water, right? Because our archival inks are waterproof. So they're not gonna react with the water, but they will react with the alcohol. Let's add a little drop of alcohol to our paper towel. Oops, you can see there, there's my drop. And if we uh, apply that alcohol to the paper towel here, then we're gonna stretch our color a little bit further. And we can go right out to the edges there, which I think is amazing. <laughs> now I'm gonna stain my fingers doing this, so beware. Um, you will get colored <laughs> if you use your fingers like I do. Um, I'm a fly by the seat of your pants crafter. Um, so I don't usually take precautions, which I maybe should, like I guess you could wear gloves. Um, but the good news is since this reacts with the alcohol, you can just use hand sanitizer um, to clean your hands. <laughs> Um, but look at that, we got an entire background. Now, the more alcohol you add, the more diluted it gets. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you wanted that more vibrant um, uh, color that is very pigmented, then you can add more ink. Um, but the more alcohol you add to it, the more it's going to dilute it, just like if you added water to a water-based ink. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that's amazing. <laughs> um, I don't know about you guys, but I think that goes really far, giving you a cool background. Obviously, you can add other colors too. Um, so if you wanted to, let's see, you could add some of the, uh, this is the mountain lake. So just a couple tiny little drops up there. Uh, I wish I had thought about having my little spray bottle. Um, so I didn't have to keep pouring big drops of alcohol on here. Um, but if you uh, if you have one of the mini misters from Ranger, you can actually um, add like a spritz of the alcohol. You can pour the alcohol into it um, and then it will allow you to spritz and you can actually get some really cool techniques that way. 
Um, new background technique, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the mountain lake. Let's go ahead and get a clean paper towel so we're not um, mixing. Well, obviously we're mixing on the paper, but not the actual paper towel. Um, so like I said, depending on how much alcohol you add, um, you can get different results. And then, see we're just using the paper towel, we can get texture if we want. Um, reactivating that alcohol and the pigmented ink there. Um, so then you can blend those and get kind of whatever desired effect you're going for. Um, the more you blot it as it dries, the more textured it's going to be, which is kind of neat. Um, so depending on what you're blotting with, you could add some really fun texture that way. Um, this would actually be a really cool way to do some clouds. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it like this, this would be really fun if you had a lighter blue um, a background, you could make some clouds this way, which is really fun. I like that. Maybe like a sunset even could be really cool. But yeah, so you can add that texture and you can always add those colors back down here as well. Um, you're never locked into anything. So see, now we're getting a little bit more purple down here. I feel like you can see it better in person, but that blue and that red are kind of mixing just a little bit and giving a sort of purplish sort of tone at the bottom. So you're really not limited to just using these reinkers for their intended purpose, right? <laughs> um, so see, now we're blending it out and we have sort of an ink blended background. You can combine those colors together, mix them. This sort of reminds me of cotton candy. Um, it's just a nice smoky sort of background. So really experiment with them, try new things. I think this is really super cool, um, but just another way that you can use those uh, reinkers other than just re-inking. You can also paint directly with them if you wanted to. So if you wanted to use an acrylic block um, like this guy, put a drop of the re-inker directly onto your acrylic block and then use your angled brush that we just looked at um, to apply the paint directly there. So you see I've got a little bit of that um, blue here and then we can just go ahead and paint right in our stamped image there. So cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. But see how easy and quick that is. And that was just the leftovers on my brush from when I was uh, going back and forth. And then just like that, we've got a stamped image that is colored in so fast, so easy. And you didn't even have to have that separate product, right? Like you've got your re-inker for when you're ready to re-ink, um, but you can also use it for your techniques, which I think is really cool. Super neat. All right, so let's do some cleaning up real quick. I wanna also show you, I know that when you think of uh, archival inks, you're probably not thinking about ink blending as much. That's not usually what people use them for because um, they are waterproof. They're not necessarily their intended use, like something that's water-based, like a distress ink. Um, those often get used for um, for ink blending, but you absolutely can ink blend with the archival inks, and I have been doing that for sure. Um, so here is an example for you of each of the colors. Uh, Mel, thank you so much for being here. Yes, definitely enjoy your time together. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put each of these colors here so you can see what they look like ink blended, stamped, and direct to cardstock. Um, me and my paper towel's out of here. <laughs> um, so I have swatched each of these out for you so that you can see what the different colors look like. Um, and I absolutely love how these look ink blended, right? Look how gorgeous those are. So we've got our cayenne over here. Hello in Florida, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have our wine cellar here, our beach cruiser. Oh, thanks Kathy. <laughs> um, and then we've got our mountain lake, our aubergine and our graphite. Look how amazing those look. The colors are absolutely beautiful. So I just took a mini ink blending tool just like this. Uh, I put on my ink blending foam and I blended directly onto this cardstock here. So this is the ink blended area. 
This is the same color stamped, and this is the same color di applied directly to the cardstock. So I call it ink swiping. I'm not sure if that's like the normal name for it, but that's what I call it. <laughs> when you just swipe the ink pad directly onto the cardstock, you can make some really cool backgrounds doing that. Um, but yeah, so this guy is direct to cardstock, ink blending, and then stamped. Um, so you can see what a great color range you can get just from that one ink pad. Um, and then of course, all of these different colors. Um, so Martha, these ones are only available in uh, this size right now. I know that some of the um, archival inks are available in a smaller um, size. They're not a cube, but they are like kind of just a mini pad of this, um, still rectangle. Yeah, they just come in the full size pads. Um, Patty, can you tell me, are those ones the um, only the ones that are like the designer colors, like um, Wendy Vecchi, the little ones, or are they the standard Ranger ones too? Patty is a genius and she can help us. She'll tell us. <laughs> um, hello in Central Florida. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> um, but yes, Patty, Patty knows all the things. She'll tell us. Um, I know at some point there were smaller ones, but I'm not sure if they all um, eventually will come in those or if that was a temporary thing. <laughs> um, but yes, so these are the colors. The purple is absolutely gorgeous. I agree. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, do some ink blending because I want to show you guys that it is a thing. Um, oh, we do. Okay, the both the designer and the standard colors in the mini pads. Oh, cool. So maybe eventually these ones will be available then in the smaller size. Fingers crossed, maybe. Um, but right now they are only available in the full size. Um, so that is all that came out today. Um, let's go ahead and grab some cardstock. So this is uh, the perfect cardstock from Wendy Becky. I'm going to go ahead and um, pop these guys up a little bit out of the way so that we are able to have a little more room to do some ink blending here. And I'm also going to grab um, my very well-loved Red Dirty um, <laughs> uh, mat. This is a silicone mat from Ranger. It is well-loved. I've been ink blending all over it and alcohol inking on it and um, hopefully you'll forgive me. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is a little bit of ink blending, um, and you can also use stencils if you are into that. I love stencils. Oh, they always come out in the full size first. That makes sense. Totally. Um, let's see. What do we want to use? Let's use this guy. Um, so I have one stencil that I'm going to show you here in just a little bit that is from the Letter It collection that you can still get. Um, and everything that I'm using should be available on the Ranger website as well. Um, so you should be able to grab those. Um, like I said, if you're interested in anything, uh, you can pop down to the description down below and the link for the newest products will be there. Um, and then if you're interested in anything else that I'm using, that's not one of the new products, those should also be there. You can just, um, search for them. This stencil is from Simon Hurley. It's called leafy greens. Um, so that one's still available. I wanted to use the beach, uh, cruiser with this one. <laughs> um, all right, Tiffany, hello. How are you doing? Sweet friend. Um, let me, I didn't bring enough of my uh, <laughs> blending tools. I have a few, but not enough for every color. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take this guy, this is the Beach Cruiser. I'm gonna take that lid right off. And I'm gonna swirl the ink, uh, the mini ink blending tool directly into the ink pad. And then I'm going to apply that to my stencil or through the stencil, I should say. Um, I like to move in that circular motion. It gives a nice smooth blend. Um, and you can see it applies really nicely through that stencil. So if I lift back, look at that beautiful result. So gorgeous. I really, really love these colors. Aren't they beautiful, Tiffany? <laughs> these, this release, I don't know, these colors are so gorgeous and they work so well together. I think that is always a really fun thing when you get those new colors and they work beautifully together. So I'm gonna apply that a little bit darker up here and then as I move towards the bottom, I'm gonna use lighter pressure so that I get a lighter color variation of this same color. Uh, and then it's just kind of going to fade around uh, or fade down to almost nothing at the bottom there. So then you get a variegated or ombre sort of look. 
darkest at the top. And then look at that. Isn't that beautiful? With archival inks. <laughs> They're so gorgeous. I don't know why people don't ink blend with them more often. I really love them with the stencils. That's so easy, right? Like it was took a couple seconds. That's it. Done. A background already. <laughs> no, this is just cardstock. Um, so this is Wendy Vecchi's perfect cardstock. Um, so I just had a pack um, that I had here and um, it is great. It's a nice thick cardstock. Um, yeah, it's just standard cardstock. Let me see the little. Um, so this is the label here. I never thought to use that, right? I know, most people don't use them for ink blending and I think they work great. Um, let's see if I can pull that up here so you can see it. So this is the, the top tab for that paper pack. Um, so they come pre-cut for you in four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, but yeah, Wendy Vecchi's perfect cardstock. It is a great blending cardstock. Um, so you can definitely blend really easily on there. Um, but yeah, so archival inks, Still great for ink blending. Um, so then let's say you wanted to use um, another color. We'll go ahead and use the purple. So we've got the aubergine here. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my uh, ink blending foams. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. What I'm gonna do is, let's see, let me line it up so it's right where I had it. Okay, I'm gonna turn it upside down so that they are going a different direction. Um, and I'm gonna try to line it up so that they kind of go in the gaps. Now, not every stencil will work like this, um, but these ones kind of tend to line up pretty cool. <laughs> um, so I just turned it upside down and turned it, just tilted it slightly, and most of the leaves are not overlapping another area that has that blue. So I'm swirling with the uh, mini ink blending tool, and then I'm gonna go right over top here, and again, I'm gonna start dark at the top, and then I am gonna go lighter as I get to the bottom. So I'll probably have to apply a little bit more ink. Um, can you share sponges with dye ink and archival? I would not recommend it um, just because they react differently. Um, so the, Patty, can you remind me, the, the archival inks are a pigment. Um, is that correct? I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, so the archival ink, since they're not water-based, it depends on the type of ink. I don't want to like say one way or the other. I know a lot of different formulations exist, um, but like for example, the water-based inks um, and then, uh, so like your distress inks and distress oxides, I would not mix with these. Um, the archival inks are oil-based. Yes, okay, I knew there was something I was missing. <laughs> um, yes, so the different type of ink, personally, I wouldn't recommend blending them or you know mixing them. Um, but you can always try it with one and see how, you, how it does. Um, but before you go and do all of your foams, um, I would maybe test it first. Personally, I don't think I would. <laughs> um, so there you go. You can see that purple there. Look how beautiful those colors look together. It's like a party on the background. I don't know. It looks so cool. Um, so this is the Beach Cruiser and the Aubergine colors. Um, they look absolutely beautiful together. And you can see how you can get that darker look up at the top and then fade it all the way down to a really, really light color at the bottom. So gorgeous, absolutely love that. It's so pretty, right? Um, and we used just one stencil, so that's really cool. That's that Simon Hurley stencil. Um, we're also gonna use a really cool letterit stencil in just a second, which is still available on the website if you're interested in snagging that. Um, this one's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so this one is an alternating chevron um, background uh, or stencil, and I really, really love the way that this one looks. It is always amazing for the backgrounds. So we're gonna make, I'm gonna grab one more uh, piece of cardstock, and we are going to ink blend with this guy, and um, then we're going to, I'm gonna get some washi tape out here. And then we're going to um, ink blend on some different colors. I'm gonna use the reds, so our cayenne and our wine cellar. Um, and then I'm also gonna add in the graphite 
Uh, so you can see kind of how you can add some deeper shadows or intense color to some that you wouldn't think would necessarily blend. Uh, so the ink doesn't stain the stencil. So the ink can stain the stencil. Um, however, it is reactivated by alcohol, right? So as we saw with the Yupo paper, if you add alcohol, you can um, like dilute or get rid of that uh, color. So you could do the same thing with the stencils. So instead of cleaning with water, because these are um, waterproof inks, um, instead of using the water, use an alcohol base like hand sanitizer or just your 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, and that will clean it right up. Um, all right, so we've got our uh, stencil here. Again, this one is a letterate alternating chevron background. And we are going to go ahead and use our cayenne first. Um, and I am going to do sort of a thing that I do kind of frequently, which is uh, taking the ink and putting it in three different spots. So I'm doing that circular motion starting there and then I'm going to come over and do a little bit over here with this same color and then I'm going to pick a third spot maybe down here um, and if you have a um, make art station this is a perfect time to use it because you can use those magnets to hold down your stencil um, I don't have mine with me today but um, that is a perfect time to use that so if you have yours definitely do it <laughs> um, and then let's go ahead and take our aubergine off we're gonna go ahead and use the wine cellar oh you know what I had one already on here um, so we'll save that for our graphite <laughs> Um, wine cellar. So I'm going to go in those spots where there was no ink anymore. There we go. So we're going to apply that to our plain white spots here. I don't know if anyone is in Virginia, but um, this is reminding me of the Virginia Tech <laughs> colors. It's kind of like that maroon and orangish sort of vibe. Um, I am based out of Virginia, so that's what stuck out to me. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend those in. So you can see with the ink blending, um, they work really, really well with stencils. That's probably my favorite way to ink blend with the archival inks. Um, and then your daughter went there? No way, Patty, I didn't know that. <laughs> that's so cool. I did not know that. Uh, let's see. Boom, there we go. But see, now you can make her a card, Patty. You can, you can use cayenne and wine cellar and make her a card. <laughs> um, so I'm going to apply the graphite. I know this seems weird. Don't panic. Um, I'm going to apply the graphite in some of these darker areas. So on top of that dark red, um, right on top of the wine cellar. Okay, so you don't have to go like totally overwhelmed or overboard with it, but just enough to give it a little bit more depth. You can overlap it with that cayenne too, no problem, it doesn't matter. Um, because we're using the stencil especially, it is very forgiving um, with how that ink is applied. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have like the perfectly smooth blend that you might want if you were not using a stencil. Um, and then the reveal, that's the best part, right? Look how pretty it is. Isn't that ridiculous? So we used three colors and we got this beautiful, vibrant, but then more colored depth uh, background. I went a little outside the lines here. <laughs> um, one of my little spots is a little blurry, um, but I actually think it's that I broke my stencil. So it probably wiggled around a little bit when I was, <laughs> when I was moving it. I was a little rough when I was cleaning it once. Um, and there's one little, oh, yep, there it is, one little spot that I broke. Um, and so <laughs> sometimes my one little spot gets a little bit messy. But hi, Roberta. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, that is our ink blended background. Look how beautiful that is. Um, so then we can go ahead and take our washi tape right off. And we're ready to use that background if we want to. Um, so now we've seen, so we've got some of the colors here. We've got our beach cruiser and our aubergine. We've got our cayenne wine cellar and the graphite. 
Um, aren't they beautiful? I absolutely love them. And then we've also painted with some of our archival inks as well and mixed them with some alcohol, which is really cool. Um, so when you're looking at these backgrounds, they're beautiful on their own, right? However, there's always room for a little more, right? So to complement these beautiful colors and these beautiful backgrounds, Ranger has also come out with coordinating colors for the archival inks in the stickles line. Um, so we have one for every color, uh, new stickles. Look how beautiful. <laughs> I'm so excited. They're so gorgeous. Um, uh, where did our beach cruiser go? Oh, I'm hiding it under my stencil. <laughs> I was like, I'm missing a color. Where did it go? Um, aren't they so gorgeous? Yes, I am obsessed. They're so beautiful. So we have these new stickle colors for every color. So you can coordinate, mix and match. You can use them as accents. And I actually have a swatch of each of these colors so that you can see what they look like when they're dry. These are the stickles. Um, so I stamped the archival ink here. I covered that stamped image with the stickles. I did a little squiggle and then three dots that you can use as accents, kind of like you would with sequins or enamel dots. Um, you can definitely use the stickles the same way. And then it gives you just that little bit of texture, a little bit of raised interest to your card so that it's not completely flat, which is really cool. Um, so that is our aubergine. We've got our graphite and look at that sparkle. It's so beautiful. We've got our wine cellar. We have our cayenne. We have our beach cruiser and we have our mountain lake. They are so gorgeous. I'm absolutely obsessed. And I have been experimenting with some different ways to um, get those uh, into our card designs, right? So there's the standard, like use it as an accent. You can kind of do some dots here and there. You can draw with them, but I like to use them to accent the stenciled areas. So if you were going to add some accents to this background that we just ink blended, I would take my cayenne and I'm gonna put that directly on here. I'll try to move it so you can see as I'm doing it. I'm gonna just squeeze that gently and follow the lines of the chevron pattern. I really like the geometric designs for this reason because they're really fun to add some details. Oh no, not the stickles. <laughs> um, yes, we are here with the stickles. Um, and then we've got, let's do maybe this guy over here. We'll add a little bit. So I'm just following that chevron and I'm not gonna do every one. Now, if you wanted to do every one, you could, and you could apply it through the stencil so that you made sure it was exactly where you wanted it. Um, but I don't wanna do every one. I just wanna add a few accents here and there just to add a little something extra to the background. So then I'm gonna go in with the wine cellar. That's our little guy there. And then maybe one here. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just picking random ones. <laughs> um, I really need to stop watching these videos, but it's giving you inspiration, right? That's the point. <laughs> um, and then I'll go in with the graphite as well. We'll just add a little here. I'm gonna have to get refills because I have been going to town using these on all these different backgrounds because I love them so much. Um, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get some more. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and add a little over here. Uh, and you don't have to apply a ton. You can apply it thick if you want, but you don't have to. Love the color names too. Same. Me too. I'm a sucker for cute color names. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. Now, they do take time to dry. Um, so make sure you give yourself enough time that those are going to be able to dry completely. They should be almost flat. They'll be a little bit raised, um, but almost flat when they're done. Um, so you can see that there, a little globby right now. When it dries, it will not look globby. Um, so I actually have 
um, a dried sample of this that I'm gonna show you. Hang tight. All right, here we go. I made one of these. <laughs> um, so this is fresh, this is dried. Um, so this little guy is already done. Look at those colors, they're so beautiful. Uh, not sure the pocketbook, <laughs> Roberta, I 100% understand. <laughs> um, so look how gorgeous that is. Ah, I love it so much. Oh, it looks so pretty. Look at all that sparkle. Eee. I don't know. I'm obsessed. It looks so good. So when you first do it, you might be like, mm, I'm not 100% sure that I should have done that. And then when it dries, you're like, oh yeah, that was an excellent idea. So smart. <laughs> I'm so glad I did that. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love the way that those turn out. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to experiment and really try different things with your um, with your inks and your your reinkers and your stickles and all the things. You're not limited to how they were intended to be used, right? So there are so many different ways that you can use these. And I think that's kind of the beauty of the paper crafting world and all the different supplies. I have Ranger open. <laughs> Fixes your oops areas, exactly, yes. You can use it and go right over those. And then if you had any mistakes, then you're perfect. Um, the other thing too that I have been experimenting with, um, and I wish that I had a dried copy, um, but I'm gonna show you what I did. And then at the end, um, I'll put up a photo of the cards that I made and you'll be able to see those. Um, but what I like to do is take like, let's say this stamp here. This is from um, a letter it stamp set from Ranger called Thank You. And it's got this beautiful thanks stamp here. That's what I use to do all my swatches. Um, so this is in the wine cellar color. Um, what I like to do is go directly over top of that with my stickles. So you gotta take it slow um, so that you stay in the lines, right? <laughs> this is a little bit tough. It does take a little bit of a steady hand, um, but I like to go directly over top of these stamped images, right, with our stickles. Um, we're gonna go all the way around like this. And it will look like you are a crafting genius when you are done with this because this set of stickles is gonna dry in a perfectly scripted font, right? Like it's gonna look like, wow, you're the stickles master. How in the world did you write so neatly with those stickles? <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> um, and really, you are just so crafty, right? Um, so you just follow directly along that. And look, if it's not perfect, it's okay. It won't matter. As long as it's close, right? So you just take it slow, go all the way around. We're almost there. <laughs> and you can squeeze a little less hard um, on the thinner areas. So if you squeeze a little bit harder on the thicker areas, then you'll get a little bit more um, of a thick spread. Whereas on the thinner areas, you can just squeeze a little bit less and then you'll get a thinner um, uh, thinner application. Um, so there we go. So I don't have one that's dried. I wish I had done this now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's see, let's get you close up here but look how beautiful that is. So that's gonna dry fairly flat, just like how we have here. Um, that's gonna dry flat like this, and you're gonna have that beautiful sentiment that you can then use on a card. Let me, I'm gonna grab my mouse here, and I am going to add on the screen really quick, hold on one second. Um, we are going to add a photo. <laughs> Um, I wasn't planning on doing this, so bear with me, <laughs> but I really want you to be able to see this. So hang tight. Here we go. Um, all right. So that picture should pop up here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So this card right here in the center, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. This card that says thanks, like we just did, that sentiment is made 
with the same technique that we just did with that thanks with the stickles. So all I did was I used the graphite on that one and I put it over top of the thanks just like we just did. I let it dry and then I cut out around it. Um, now I'm going to teach you a cool trick also while you're here. You're getting bonus knowledge, okay? We're going to set this aside. <laughs> Um, I can't do it on that one because it has wet stickles, but we're going to do it on another one that I have stamped out. So check this out. So we have our stamped image, right? Um, let me make sure I can see another technique. Yes, of course. I'm happy to share. Um, all right. So we've got our stamp set, right? I'm going to take the stamp. Okay. If you're worried about maybe like you don't have a coordinating die, but you really want to have a really neat sentiment um, that you can use like you had a die. All right, check this out. <laughs> so we are going to put that stamp directly on top of what we already stamped, right? Uh, and then I'm going to get a pencil, which I should have come prepared with, but I don't have. Hold on. Let's find a pencil. Or in this case, I'll use a pen so you can actually see it. <laughs> um, so let's make sure it works. It works. Okay. So we're going to go right around the outside of... Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't judge my tracing skills. They're not very good. If you do this with a pencil, um, you don't have to worry so much because it's not going to be as visible. <laughs> but this way, you guys will be able to see it. Um, so we're going to go right around here. You just hold it in place so it doesn't shift, right? We're going right around the outside there. Okay. So then we've got a border. Okay. Then we're going to cut the border out. <laughs> um, so then you just take your pair of scissors and you cut directly around it like so just following that and like i said it doesn't have to be perfect now we're still going to be able to see some of that pen um but if you had a pencil you would just then erase it so then you wouldn't be able to see it right or you could cut just inside if you wanted to um but then we'll have a perfect border for our stamped image especially for a sentiment this works so well and I love doing this. <laughs> um, and people are like, how, oh, wow, you're so good at fussy cutting. How did you do that? I'm like, man, I just traced it. That's all. So easy. Look at that. Boom. And now it's like a little die cut. <laughs> um, and then if you had the pencil lines, you could just go in and then erase that. Now I have a little bit of a pen uh, indent here. I didn't do a super great job tracing it because I was hurrying and using the pen. But look how cool that is. Your fussy cutting always looks so effortless. I don't know. Sometimes I think it's just that it's the, usually when I post a video, I speed it up. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, so now let's say, you know, you could do another one of this, right? So I, the way I did it in that picture I showed, I did another one on the outside of this and added a black background. Um, that way it had, it stood out against the background. Um, so it just had a little black border there and that was it. And that it enabled me to have a sentiment that matched directly with my background. Um, and then I also did put a piece of vellum um, smaller than the this piece of cardstock. So maybe if you were doing a four and a quarter by five and a half card, I would say maybe 3.75 by five. Um, and that's inches. Um, so 3.75 inches by five inches for a piece of vellum. So that's kind of like the see-through sort of frosted paper. Um, and then that way it helps that sentiment stand out against the background as well. So then you'll have the little bits of glitter and stickle sticking out on the outside. You'll have your beautiful sentiment um, and then it'll be easy to see and it'll stick out. Isn't that cool? I love it. I hope that you guys got some inspiration from our new products. <laughs> um, so just to recap, we have six new colors of uh, archival inks. 
We have six new re-inkers that coordinate with those. We have six new colors of stickles that coordinate with those as well. And then we have our brushes, which come in a six pack. I think the six thing is really strong here this time. <laughs> um, we got our angled brushes that are perfect for a variety of things, whether it's uh, paints, mediums, pastes, right? You can use them with all kinds of stuff, but you can also paint with them. Um, you can use them for coloring in your images like we did earlier. We've got our blue here and our green on the, uh, the foliage. Um, but yeah, so many options, so many cool things um, with this new product release from Ranger. Like I mentioned earlier, you guys can find everything down at the link in the description. Um, just click that link to get to the new products and you can definitely check them out. Um, if you have any questions, definitely get with us on social media. Um, if you would like to get in touch with me on social media, um, I am Love Jess, so down here. <laughs> That's my handle on Instagram. Um, you can find me there, message me, share with me whatever you're creating. Be sure to tag Ranger. Feel free to tag me if you were inspired to create something today. Um, let's go ahead and start uh, or switch over to the face camera. Ah, there I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love, love, love to see what you all are working on. Um, and I know Ranger would too. So definitely share with us, um, tag us on social media. Um, always get in contact with us and let us know what you're up to. Uh, thank you all so much for sharing your afternoon with me. I had an absolute blast. I hope you did too. Um, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys in another one really soon. <laughs>